Charlie Hurd is a Fox News contributor and opinion editor of The Washington Times. Kevin Walling is a former Biden surrogate and a Democrat strategist. Welcome to you both, gentlemen. Kevin, why waltz over you. Shapiro? It, and it does look like Walsh moved left when he moved into the governor's mansion. I mean, he went from being endorsed by the NRA to, to giving benefits to unlawful immigrants. Hey, Trey, good to be with you. I think the answer to your question about why Walls uh, comes down to simple chemistry. Uh, you know, they, they had a Sunday meeting, the vice president with the top two contenders, uh, Governor Shapiro and Governor Walls. Uh, and it seemed like the chemistry between Governor Walls and, and the vice president is really what sealed the deal. And we've seen that, to your point in the intro, uh, across the country, from Pennsylvania to Michigan to Wisconsin, Nevada last night, 12,000 people uh, in Nevada uh, welcoming, welcoming this ticket. And they seem to be joyful warriors uh, together on, on the stump. So I think it comes down to chemistry. Of course, you know, as we pivot away from uh, the primary, uh, and uh, we really didn't have much of a primary, obviously, with the, with the president stepping down, but pivoting to the general, you always see this uh, as the case where tickets uh, kind of moderate their views on a whole host of issues to play for the most important uh, group of voters, and that's moderates and independents uh, in these five, six uh, key battleground states. Charlie, two points. I guess my, my point is Walt's actually moderated from the center more towards the left. Here's my other point. A few weeks ago, Trump survived an assassination attempt. There was a uniquely unified GOP convention, but, but now the race looks tied or maybe even slightly towards Harris. So what happened? Well, of course, uh, you know, those of us who would like to uh, the political media to sort of disappear, um, we're not going to get our wish. Uh, they are uh, major operators in all of this. And, of course, they're keeping the honeymoon going. And uh, I would uh, predict that, that uh, Kamala Harris and uh, Tim Waltz will have another week of very, very favorable coverage because that's just what the media does and that's how they're going to do it. The problem is, and I, and I think what you said, Kevin, is probably the smartest thing I've heard about why, you know, the idea that there's some chemistry here, maybe that does help. Um, but the problem for them is that I don't think in the end that the election is going to turn on chemistry between those two. I think it's going to end up turning on the issues that matter to people. And what we're seeing from uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz is, a, is a, a, a strained effort to talk about anything but the issues on which they are wildly out of step with normal Americans on, uh, up against a guy like Donald Trump for what, no matter how much, you know, I, I get it, a lot of people don't like him, but he is more in step with American voters on the issues that matter to him uh, than any president, uh, candid presidential candidate we've ever had running for office. And so the media is going to keep doing what they do. But I do think that as we sort of, you know, honeymoons get old after a while. People want to get back to work. And once the honeymoon is over, I think people are going to start focusing on those issues. And they're going to uh, probably align those independents are going to end up agreeing more with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance than with Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh. Just for the record, and in case my wife is listening, that was Charlie that said that honeymoon's in. That was not Trey. Kevin, Governor Walls, I served with him, but I didn't know him well. I described him as being neither electrifying nor electrocuting, that he was more kind of a safety pick, uh, ideological similarity, maybe to appease a faction on the left that didn't seem to want a Jewish man on the ticket. I mean, we haven't discussed that, but there was a concerted effort to keep Shapiro off the, off the ticket, at least to some of us. Yeah, Trey, there were a lot of, uh, in, in the days leading up to that choice, a lot of anti-Semitic attacks on the governor of, of Pennsylvania, who's, who's a friend, and I, I care deeply for him. Uh, and there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to be president uh, of the United States at, at some point. Uh, but again, I think it goes back to what I said earlier, chemistry, the idea that this guy served 20 uh, plus years uh, in, uh, in the Army National Guard, can take this campaign uh, everywhere, from rural states. You point out he was uh, endorsed multiple times uh, by the NRA, had a change of heart, obviously, uh, he, that he credits with his daughter, Hope, uh, with uh, school shootings uh, and the rise of those school shootings in terms of uh, adapting and changing his position 
uh, on guns. Uh, but so this is a pragmatic guy who I think, you know, isn't stubborn, isn't locked into, uh, you know, the things that he believed two decades ago, uh, but is pragmatic and can go into rural communities. Uh, I mean, he, he take a page out of his you know trip to the Minnesota fair uh, every single year. I mean, I think that plays well in rural America. It certainly played well in his district in, in southern Minnesota, a district that he carried in 2016 that Donald Trump won by 15 points. Uh, so this is a guy who can go anywhere, uh, and I think he's going to be a, a big boon to the ticket. All right, Charlie, before I let you go, we're, we're out of time, and I'm going to get in trouble. But I got, I got to ask you, with the border and inflation and the economy, why in the world are Republicans talking about Brian Kemp in Georgia? There's so many issues to talk about. Well, well, why talk about things that voters actually aren't interested in? Uh, I think you're right. I, we, Republicans shouldn't be talking about those things. They should be just talking about the issues because the issues are what's going to win the election. Uh, the issues are what won Donald Trump the presidency in 2016. And I believe those issues are, are, are going to be what wins Donald Trump the election in 2024. Foc hyper focus on the issues that uh, are uh, massively in line with uh, most American people. Um, uh, and, and, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, Kamala Harris cannot claim. She is wildly out of step with regular Americans. Charlie Hurd, Kevin Walling, I love having you both on. I have a sneaking suspicion this won't Great be the last you. time the three of us get <laughs> together. Thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. Thanks, Trey.